Stay with the breath. Don't let your thoughts wander off to anything else. You've got the breath element that goes throughout the whole body. Be aware of that. As you breathe in, think of it going down through the torso, down the legs, down to the tips of the toes, down the shoulders, out the arms, circulating around the head, creating a sense of cool sense of well-being inside. Don't let your thoughts go outside at all. And John Fu tells the story of one time he was meditating in the forest. In the evening he checked the sky to make sure there were no clouds. And so he hung his umbrella tent under a tree. He checked the sky because once you've put your umbrella tent in place, there's a tradition that you stay there, you don't go moving around. So you check to make sure there are no anthills anywhere. Nothing that's going to come and bother you. The sky looks clear. And you can hang your tent out in an open place. Hanging, and by hanging, I mean that you run a line from one tree to another and then hang the, tr the tent from that line. I was meditating and then finally went to sleep. And then he woke up well, late, late at night. A storm had blown up from who knows where wind, rain. The only thing he had to protect him was the mosquito net of the tent, which wasn't much. So he took all of his robes except for his under robe and he put them in his bowl to keep them dry. And he sat there meditating, and the theme of his meditation was the body may be wet, but the mind isn't wet. The body may be cold, but the mind isn't cold. In other words, those sensations can be there, but they don't have to invade the mind and remain. And he said he was able to get into concentration and spent the night quite comfortably in concentration. We're facing a heat wave. Today is beginning to get warmer. So keep that same principle in mind. The air outside may be hot, but you don't have to let that invade your mind. If you sit there talking to yourself about how hot it is outside and how difficult it is to bear with it, that just brings the heat inside to the mind. It does nothing but make you suffer. Let the heat do its heat thing. But you can stay focused on the breath, which doesn't have heat, doesn't have cold. It's just breath coming in, going out. Do what needs to be done in order to protect your body from the heat. Make sure you get plenty of water, a little bit of salt to make sure that you don't dehydrate wrong. Find a cool place to stay, the coolest place you can find. And then take care of your mind. As long as you keep your mind under control, it's not going to suffer. The Buddha said our problem is that we allow things to invade the mind and remain there. It's as if they're standing at the door. You might think of that image of the gatekeeper at the fortress, which is mindfulness. And it has the choice. Something comes up, and you can, the gatekeeper can either let that person in or keep the person out. If it looks like a friend, okay, let the friend in. If it looks like an enemy or you're not sure, keep it out. In the same way, the heat will be there presenting itself. And your thoughts that don't like the heat will be presenting yourself, but you don't have to take them on. You don't have to take them in. This is how they invade. It's not that they bang the doors down. You open the door and let them in. Then you ask yourself, why am I suffering? Well, you were a traitor to yourself. You're, the well-being of the mind is something that can be separate from conditions outside. That's a principle we're trying to learn, and this is a good way to learn it in a very basic and elemental way. So the temperature outside, the air outside may be hot, but don't let it heat the mind. When you're selective in what you focus on, you find that you really can make a difference in how you experience the present moment. What's coming in from outside is past karma, but it's half-formed. It's not quite a full present moment experience yet. That gets formed by what you focus on, how you focus on it what you tell yourself about it. And those are things that you can learn to master as skills. Because otherwise we can take a bad situation and make it worse. We can take a good situation and make it bad. But why? The Buddha is teaching us the skills where we don't have to do that. So we should take advantage of what he has to say.